And that question. What are you going to do? Mute the mic? The, You're going to mute the mic? The do your job, Fergus. Let's remember that seniors are listening. They've had enough of these evasive answers. It's time to make a decision. All year, I've been going to meet seniors throughout Quebec. They all agree that liberals should increase old age security for people between 65 and 74, just as they did for people 75 and over. This is urgent. We cannot create two classes of seniors. Will the liberals finally put an end to the system and increase OIS by 10% from 65 years of age? The Honourable Minister of Labour and Seniors, Mr. Speaker, I know that the Bloc Québécois don't like to hear this, but votes and other actions have consequences. The Bloc Québécois voted against the dental care program, the national dental care program, which now exists in my colleague's writing, her own writing. I went there with my colleague recently and I met one of my colleagues, constituents, out of the 14,000 constituents who now receive dental care in her riding. And this person expressed their gratitude, but my colleague voted against that. The honorable member for Shefford. The liberals have a choice. Either they put an end to this two-tier system, system, this two-tier system for seniors, or they are going to have to go to the ballot box to maintain their system. We in the Bloc Québécois have opted for justice and fairness. It's time for the Liberals to make a choice. They can put an end to this age-based discrimination, or they can keep trying to promote this unjustifiable discrimination at the ballot, at the ballot box. What are they going to choose? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, once again, my colleague is raising the specter of an election instead of taking concrete action like voting for assistance to Canadian seniors. She has not tried to help Quebec seniors ever since she's been here. She's voted against an increase in the guaranteed income supplement. She voted against the dental care plan that is helping 14,000 people in her own riding. Costing taxpayers billions of dollars. Seniors. But it is the Liberal government that is actually taking action to help our seniors. Hey, folks, if you haven't yet already, I'd appreciate it if you guys smash that like button so we can get some more people in here and subscribe. I know <clears throat> it's absolutely free to do so. It helps fight climate change. I would invite members not to. Rumor has it, it helps fight climate change. The floor. The Honorable Member for Jean Pierre. Not only are the Liberals discriminating against seniors, but they are also making cuts to organizations that are trying to support seniors. For example, they've been making cuts to the Aging Well at Home initiative because they don't want to, make, to sign an agreement with Quebec. Once again, a cynical attempt to interfere with Quebec's jurisdiction, and seniors are suffering for it. In fact, Quebec's intergovernmental affairs minister said that it's disgusting. That's what, that's what the minister said, not me. That is disgusting. When will the Liberals make an agreement with Quebec and stop taking seniors hostage. The Honourable Minister, we have a very important pilot project to help seniors age at home. <laughs> and there are some excellent projects, like at the Chambly a community organization, which has a program to broaden the scope of services with more and more volunteers to help seniors who are in a vulnerable position or living in a rural milieu. The government of Quebec is blocking that. My colleague should address his question to the government of Quebec that is blocking the money. Member from Regina Leuven. After nine years of this costly coalition, taxes are up, costs are up, crime is up. Time is up. The NDP <clears throat> Liberal government's reckless policies have forced two million people to food banks. Their destructive carbon tax has made it almost impossible for our farmers to make affordable food to put on the tables of Canadians. Canadians want and deserve a carbon tax election. They can decide between the costly coalition or a common sense conservative government that will axe the tax, build the <clears throat> home, 
fix the budget and stop, stop the, crime. the crime. The question is, when will this lame duck prime minister call carbon tax elections so Canadians can have their say? He's going to mute the mic, unparliamentary. You can't call him a lame duck, even though I agree with it. My members to uh, ensure to be careful about making comments about specific members of parliament. Come the on, bro. An attorney general. Let's review the facts for a moment about the carbon price. The carbon price reduces pollution and puts money back into the pockets of Canadians. In fact, 8 out of 10 families receive more money back than they pay with an increasing price on pollution. It is the single best market me mechanism known to reduce carbon footprints. We used to have a lot of parties in this chamber supporting that price. Unfortunately, we've seen a flip in terms of position by virtue of the leader of the NDP's position. What that does is it signals voter cynicism, but it also signals to progressives, including in my riding of Parkdale High Park, that if you want a party that's going to fight against climate change, your only choice is the Liberal Party of Canada. How many years so we don't have any more floods and wildfires? One of the taxes you know, is going to fix it. From Regina Leuven. When a single mother is deciding to put milk in the fridge or gas in the car for their children, that, that answer is going to give them no comfort this winter, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. The NDP has sold out Canadians. For what, Mr. Speaker? It's time to know the truth. Will the NDP stand with Canadians and make sure that there is a carbon tax election that they want? Or is it true, Mr. Speaker, does the leader of the NDP care more about his pension than what Canadians want? I mean, it's a very unusual day. <laughs> it is, bro. This is supposed to be Wednesday. <laughs> What's going on?